Hello, I'm Rich, and I am the director slash editor slash every fucking thing else on a bunch of amateurs. And I'm here today to talk to you about the second episode of season two, which is one that I have no recollection of whatsoever. So let's watch this together. Um, okay, if Barks ever finds some dog crap on the pitch, always got to film. Like, oh, it's this one. All right, so these guys came down to do an inspection um, from the FA and it was such a shock three kind of aging white men coming down from the fa i didn't see that coming um so they're looking at the pitch and the facilities and the balls and barks has got no patience whatsoever for these people he just wants to um prepare his team um he's hoping it was going to be a formality but then they started pulling out measuring things um and talking about like there's a there was a small divot in one of the goal mouths so uh, they had to fill that in but they couldn't upset the local parish by digging it up or something and um i think um i don't think this is the one where he walked off in frustration I think that was the second time they came um but yeah he got very fed up with that very quickly um they got down there super early to set up as well so that that didn't help of course it's coming back to me now like i say i don't remember i don't even know who they're playing hang on brighton electric not a team that i remember i remember the name thinking that's weird um but this is uh the second game in the pre, um division two the sussex whatever the fuck division two um, oh yeah, it's, I, I remember doing this. I do, I've done this loads of times and it's never worked. Um, but I speeded up the footage um, and I'm always thinking that seems like a good idea. This is the only time I actually made it work. Um, and if I remember rightly, I'm still doing my silly London, um, East London voice. God, that guy's ripped. What was his name? He only played a few games. He went back to Hawley. I don't think he could handle stuff like putting the goals out and that. That defender, he was a very good defender. I, I'm pretty sure I interviewed him at the end of this. There he is. Look at the fucking muscles on that guy. Do you have any idea how horrible it is to be at least two stone overweight and to walk into that dressing room and to walk in, even worse, the Dorking dressing room and see these guys and they're so ripped. And here I am trying to eat less than 500 calories today. I'm already on 400 and it's only five o'clock. Anyway, um, yeah, what can I say about this game? I don't remember it. Um, I've forgotten his name. Really nice guy though, very serious um, so yeah, they were getting a lot more fans. They were getting ground hoppers and stuff now that they've changed division. I love that shot. That looked good. Um, I don't know who was filming this game. Um, obviously me. Zach's uh, brother would help out with um, one of the cameras from time to time. I'm guessing maybe Greg. Um, oh, I remember that goal. I remember that. Um, I think Charles would win this game, don't they? I think they do. Um, I remember that yeah I remember that huge relief because they lost 3-1 in the previous game and I remember this game being like oh they're not going to get relegated kind of feeling um, Jamie was on really good form this day um, like I say that oh, what was that fucking guy's name I'm, I'm going to stop trying to remember that. he was really good in defence and um, George Smith was playing well. I hadn't, I didn't know him very well at this point. Always looking for that shot of the ball going across the road because that what says amateur football like having to recover the ball from there. Um, so we're still doing the through the net shots. We didn't do a huge amount of that after this. Um, yeah, he did that defender guy did really well to set up pain in there. That's a good shot. I've used that a lot um, in show reels and such. I think I even use it on Patreon. Um, So I can't bring myself to listen to this because I know it's one of my early narrations and I just put on this really silly voice and I'm really embarrassed about it and I wish I could change it. I wish I could go back and re-upload it or something. Um, but it is what it is. I guess you have to accept those early early episodes. Jamie was really busting his own balls. I remember that because he, um, he had a few chances to really put this game to bed and he didn't take them. And I think he was really upset. So yeah, we're breaking the 180 rule here a lot I thought we'd stop that by now so we should only be filming on one side of the pitch and we shouldn't go past a line down the middle of the pitch if you get what I mean running not down the halfway line but running the other way um, because otherwise it gets confusing for the viewers if if you go past that point then suddenly child are going from left to right and now they're going from right to left depending on the camera view so um, we stopped doing that soon uh, but we were still doing it here which is silly 
Um, but yeah, through the net shots always look good in these kind of situations. So um, I kind of wish we had enough cameras now to, to have that extra camera roaming around getting those nice shots. But we don't. Um, that spare camera is in the dressing room here, I think. Um, of course, back here, so this is the three, should be a three camera setup, but back here I had to carry the camera on a tripod as well as the camera on the gimbal all the way across the pitch to the dressing room. So if I didn't have someone with me, there was always a danger that someone was going to walk down the road and steal it, um, which I was always very, very worried about. But I missed this dressing room because I was very relaxed with these guys. I mean, I'd known Jamie, I've known him for nearly 20 years now. Um, not that we're close friends or anything, but we've we've known each other through football for a long time. I haven't even never played. Like he scored against me in 2006 or so, several times. But I was a really good five-a-side goalkeeper, not an 11-a-side goalkeeper. I was easily lobbed, so I was better off in five-a-side. Although I did the last time I played five-a-side, I think I did get lobbed in a five-a-side game. So that was the end of my career. Um, anyway, um, so Barks is concerned about them, you know, not quite finishing them off and continuing to do what they're supposed to do and geeing them up I suppose and getting them out there again um, trying to spot who's in the dressing room this day so I can't remember everybody's name I, I feel like I should remember everybody's name but there's two people there whose names I can't remember so I don't want to Don't Sean, no that's not Sean Sean's the ginger guy ah oh, fuck um, there's George Smith and there's Josh Fordry really good guy, he's still playing um, another Cholton supporter like me there's Josh with Jamie they've known each other for many many years as well a lot of these guys play together at Smallfield apparently I got told George uh, Smith there would follow Barks everywhere and he has done he followed him to Holland Aaron Murphy over there is in his second season with the club uh, Payne who's now the Cholton manager um, so we've done a bit of work with him recently as I record this um, and there's Mike going around geeing people up a little bit. So that's a, that team talk was much longer than either half of football. There we go. That's a nice shot, isn't it? Denotes the start of play. That's a weird cut. A couple of weird cuts here. I think this might be an early half goal, so I'm not fully prepared for it. There you go. Payne thrashing it home. He likes smashing it in from close range, didn't he? He's pretty good at that. So, oh yeah, it went to 2-1, didn't it? Sorry, I missed that. It was a really good goal, that Brighton goal. Um, so yeah as ever wishing that I could do Jack, uh, Zach more justice um, which we have done in the more recent stuff that we filmed there goes uh, Kev Lock again still had it here Kev so yeah back here we're really only showing goals and chances not showing patterns of play um, which we do a lot more of with Dorking um, it's more storytelling I think back, well I don't know I guess it's it's more succinct storytelling here Mark's talking specifically about what's happening, whereas now with Dorking, if Mark says something, then I set that up about 20 minutes before it happens, which is why the episodes are so insanely long, I guess. Um, it was much more brutal back here in terms of what I cut out. Jamie furious with himself. He's had so many chances in this game. Um, I don't remember anything about the opposition. I don't think I spoke to them at all, really. Um, oh, yeah, they squeezed in that late header, and I think it got a bit nervy. Uh, GoPro didn't quite get it. Poor old Zach. Best, much better goalkeeper than these episodes ever did him credit for. And I say that in every commentary I do. I like those shots. Following the player and not the ball. Because um, you can always show the ball where it went afterwards. That's a proper Hero 86. World Cup 86 shot. How many chances did Jamie have in this game? <laughs> like, he's frustrated like Zach because I should have cropped in on that shot um, because they never quite got the justice. Um, a lot of the clips and TikToks were about things going wrong for them rather than the things that they did right. And Jamie would often score when I wasn't looking or when I was still coming back from the dressing room or something. That happened loads. So there's probably loads of goals that Jamie could have had on TikTok that just never happened. Um, anyway... Nice summer's day in Charlwood. It's been a long time since we've since we've done that. Really enjoyed those days. It's just mad to me to think that this was when was this? Two years ago, something like that. Yeah, so late 2020, um, and it's currently halfway through, you know, third of the way through 2022. So, yeah, a year and a half ago at least. Um, Richard Pelt? No, that was Pelly. I don't remember his fucking name. Um, but yeah, it's just mad to think that this is all in the past and this isn't ongoing. 
you know, although, you know, I did get to work with Zach last week and Payne, there's Richard Easter at the back. He's retired now. I think he plays for the Vets. He was a, a diligent worker. Kev Locke, I assume he's playing for the Vets. I haven't seen Kev in a while. Um, what a lovely guy. Um, no idea what Barks is saying here. I could probably guess, though. Uh, looks like the GoPro got moved. I didn't crop the GoPros as much as I do now, which is a mistake. I would like to rectify. That's a nice frame. It's nicely lit. We're terrible. And I say this on every video as well. We are terrible at lighting interviews. We've been very lazy with that. Um, Adam Pullen. There he goes. <laughs> Adam Pulley, I suppose. Um, didn't last long. Like I say, I think he uh, he wanted to get back to step five, I think, Hawley Town are. Where he didn't have to pull the goals out and help set the nets up and stuff. Or pay his subs. Um, frustrating. Always wanted to get involved with the post-match beers, but A, he had to drive home and B, was always filming um, while they're having their beers. So by the time we packed up, we were the last people there. So um, never really got to enjoy the uh, atmosphere after a win, which is a shame. And that happened the other day as well when I when I filmed Charlwood uh, for a Charlwood catch-up episode. Would very much like to have had a beer afterwards. It was a hard day's work. But by the time I finished, I was literally the last person at the stadium. Um, but that's the life of... Uh, a bunch of amateurs, cameraman, I suppose. Um, yeah, they sold warm cans of beer at Charlwood, so I guess I didn't miss out on too much. But the light was always changing on this day and generally on post-match talks because we hadn't got the lights out, so we just went with whatever the sun was doing. And I mean, we got away with it. This looks all right. That guy I watch on YouTube who teaches you how to do lighting would probably tear this apart, but it's good enough for what we're doing. And I guess that kind of applies across the board. Things just have to look good enough and here Barks probably does need a key light on him for a bit more shape and it's probably not right to have a lighter background than a darker person but you know you can see it clearly it looks nice enough pain is probably a bit too lit there I don't know I don't know what I'm doing with lighting really got to fix that um, hoping that one of the guys the volunteers can take that over for me because I just, I just don't have time to think about lighting plus it's expensive anyway you don't need to know this um, I wonder what Barks is saying here. Hang on, let me listen. Okay, he's talking about competing at the top, unsurprisingly, um, after one win <laughs> out of two. Um, there's still music in this. You know, I only use music at the start of episodes now. I only used music to cover up my dreadful sound editing, which is still not great, but it's better than it was. Um, so, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of music throughout these episodes, which I don't do anymore. Um, so there you go. That brings an end to um, this director's commentary. I hope you enjoyed that. I think it's odd that people listen to me but here we go um you can hear plenty more of these on patreon <laughs>